Hello Internet and welcome to What's Happened, the easiest way to keep up to date with what's been going on in science news this week. And today we're going to be starting off with something that has been in the news a lot lately. As the news cycle comes back around once again, an increasingly familiar topic has shown its face. Biohackers are using CRISPR on their DNA and we can't stop it. It's just another one of the common fear-mongering articles that are being thrown around concerning people that are trying to genetically modify themselves. For those of you who haven't heard about it, CRISPR is an absolutely amazing technique which is based around the immune system of bacteria. And what it does is it allows us to edit the DNA of any creature. Because of this fact, it has the ability to treat a multitude of genetic disorders. However, these biohackers have, since the discovery of CRISPR, been trying to use it not as a tool to cure disease, but as a means to provide themselves with superhuman abilities. Now, I'm not talking about being able to run at the speed of light, turn themselves invisible, or climb walls like Spider-Man. The traits that they're looking for are things like being able to build up muscle mass more quickly or perceive UV light. But their eagerness to edit their DNA using CRISPR comes with it a lot of effort issues. Namely, should these people be allowed to risk horrendous side effects in the quest to alter their bodies? One man who thinks they definitely should be able to is Josiah Zayner. You may have seen him a while ago when he live streamed a lecture in which he injected himself with a DNA sequence that would allow him to build up muscle faster. Ooh. Didn't actually hurt that much. Since then, through crowdfunding, he has been able to start a company called The Odin. We're trying to democratize science. And the intention of this is to be able to ship out kits to people around the world to help like-minded individuals replicate his work. The issues here are potentially endless, and as a result of this, biohacking is increasingly being seen as a public health risk. But as this is a process that only affects you as an individual and your body, can we really put sanctions and controls in place to prevent people from altering their own genome? Because of all of this, biohacking is a an incredibly controversial topic. But if the biohackers can show that what they're doing is actually safe, it may open people's minds to the use of a tool like CRISPR to treat medical disorders. In similar news, a team from the University of Southern California have shown that by implanting a small device into the hippocampus, one of the parts of the brain that are integral to learning and memory formation, and stimulating this area with electrical bursts, mimicking how the brain responds to the process of learning or memory formation, we can actually increase our capacity to remember things by as much as 30%. It's hoped that this might be able to deal with some of the various forms of dementia and the process may even be adapted to stimulate other areas of the brain such as those involved in vision and hearing and moving on from the topic of biohacking this week we've been able to answer the question as to why the Amish's beards are so long in a group of the old order Amish in Indiana a genetic study has shown that a variant in the serpine 1 gene which arose about six generations ago has had some really significant effects on the Amish population the gene in question has been linked to aging and as a result of a mutation which has caused this variant this group of Amish are living on average for about 10 years longer than the rest of the population of the United States. But not only does it reduce the effects of aging, it also reduces the likelihood of people developing diabetes, which I suppose is pretty handy if you've got to be up at dawn to raise another barn. Now some fan service for the lovers of aliens out there. We just sent a radio message to another planet and we hope to get a reply within the next 25 years. If I took that long to reply to a text message from my mum, she'd probably send out a search and rescue team. But fortunately NASA are a bit more chilled out than she is. The planet in question was discovered in March of this year and was found in the habitable zone of a nearby star. As a result of this, it's thought that this planet could harbour liquid water, a key component for supporting life similar to that found on Earth. This planet was found to be about 12 light years away, which explains why we're going to be waiting so long for a reply. And what is it that these aliens could potentially be receiving? The message contains some information about some of the practices that we get up to on Earth, namely geometry, arithmetic, trigonometry, and counting, as well as some instructions on how to tell the time. It might just be me, but I'm thinking that we probably should have sent this information to the White House rather than to space, as there's someone there that could really do with a bit of help. And finally in science this week, some crazy Japanese guys are going to help you make a brontosaurus burger at home. The amazing team at Shojin Meat have developed plans for a bioreactor which you can set up in your kitchen. And this can allow anyone to grow their own burger similar to the one that hit the news a short while ago. The team has shown that all you need is a sample of the cells found in the delicious meaty snack that you want to eat, an edible structure around which these cells can grow, and some form of new nutrient medium, which the team at Shojin Meat have shown doesn't need to be complex at all. For example, sports drinks work fantastically for this. This should provide the opportunity for us to craft meats that are often seen as delicacies, such as shark, sea urchin and foie gras, without horrendously mistreating animals or damaging ecosystems. And the team at Shojin Meat even have plans to be able to produce our own T-Rex steaks. And that sums up what's happened this week in science news. As always, I'm Sam and I look forward to seeing you all next week. I love you all and have a good one. Ta-ra!